everyone, it's Sarah with RegisterNurseRN.com and in this video we're going to go over right bundle branch blocks. Whenever you are interpreting EKGs, you'll want to be looking for if a patient has a right bundle branch block. In my previous videos we talked about atrial fibrillation, a flutter, all the other different rhythms, and we even talked about left bundle branch block. But in this video, I wanted to cover the right bundle branch block because it can be a little bit confusing and there's certain things that you have to look for on the EKG to know if that's what you're seeing. So I have simplified this as best as I could to help you learn it and take it into clinical practice so you can understand this better. So this is what I'm gonna cover in this video. I'm gonna talk about what it is, I'm gonna talk about what causes right bundle branch blocks and I'm going to show you the criteria of what an EKG would have to look like in order to have a right bundle branch block. Then I'm going to go over actual examples of EKGs that show right bundle branch blocks, show you what the QRS and the S waves look like and compare them to a normal EKG. So to give you a better idea of what it looks like. So first let's go over what it is. Okay, a right bundle branch block is when the electrical system of the heart in the right bundle is blocked. Now, in order to understand this, you have to know how the electrical conduction system of the heart works. I have a video where I go over this extensively and it has a quiz along with it if you want to watch that video. Now, I'm going to go over um, for you real fast. Okay, here's a little drawing. What happens is that impulse starts in your SA node. It shoots down through your interdotal pathways to the AV node, down through the bundle of his, then it branches off into your right bundle and your left bundle down through the Purkinje fibers. Now, whenever you have a right bundle branch block, the right side is blocked, hence why it's called a right bundle branch block. So right here where you see this big purple area, no signal is going. Everything is just shooting down through here to the left side. And this causes some funky things on the EKG. Now, whenever you're looking at a 12 lead, you specifically want to look at the septal view, which is V1, because this is going to tell you a lot. And let me show you. I'm going to zoom in right here so you can see what a normal EKG looks like in V1 and what an abnormal with a bundle branch block looks like in V1. Okay, in a normal EKG 12 lead in lead V1, you're going to have a beautiful P wave, a QRS complex with downward deflection, and then you're going to have the T wave. Looks beautiful, complex, is less than 0.12 seconds, everything looks normal. Now, on the contrary, when you have an abnormal EKG in V1 with you're suspecting a right bundle branch block, this is how it's going to present. You're going to have your P wave proceeding. That's one thing, it has to be sinus, so you'll have your P wave. Then all of a sudden you're going to have this thing, a lot of people call it rabbit ears and M shape. Very important, it's a hallmark sign. You're going to have a little Q, little R, and then an S, and then all of a sudden you're going to have another R wave, which is called R prime, and then your T wave. And this is one of those hallmark signs that you're going to see in definitely V1. You may see it in V2 and V3. And all it is is that you have, they call it the RSR prime. It's just a small R wave with a tall R prime wave afterwards. And sometimes you may see that this first R wave is nice and tall and then the second R wave is small. So you can also see that phenomenon as well. Now let's talk about the causes of right bundle branch block. Okay, there is various causes of what can cause a right bundle branch block. Number one, it's a congenital heart defect. They were born with this. Number two, they've had an MI, a myocardial infarction, aka a heart attack that's damaged some of the heart muscle, heart tissue myocarditis, meaning that they either got a viral or a bacterial infection that affected the heart muscle, uncontrolled high blood pressure, or a pulmonary embolism. A lot of times if these right bundle branch blocks are sudden, they just appear all of a sudden in someone that's normally healthy, um, they might suspect that the patient has a PE, which is a blood clot in the lung. So let's talk about the criteria of how you would know if this is a right bundle branch block, because there are certain criteria that you have to have. Um, majority of people agree on this criteria that I'm about to present. But first thing, in order to look at a right bundle branch block, you need a 12 lead EKG because a 12 lead EKG looks at various views of the heart. You have septal views, lateral views, anterior views, everything like that. And what you'll want to do is you'll want to look at your QRS complex. 
For it to qualify as a rod bundle ranch block, your QRS complex in that certain view will need to be at least greater than 0.12 seconds. So remember, we went over this in my previous video. If you don't know how to count the little boxes on how to measure QRS complexes, I really recommend you check out that video. You can access it on the playlist. Um, because whenever you're looking at this, you're looking for at least three small boxes because each box represents 0.04 seconds of time. So it'd be three or greater to qualify as measuring as long as that. Next, you'll want to look at V1, which is what we just covered. And you'll want to look for that RSR prime phenomenon that we went over. And it's like that M shape or the rabbit ears as some people call it. And that may be present in V2 and V3, which we're going to go over that here in a second. In these examples, you can see them up close about what I'm talking about. And in the lateral leads, um, I'm going to show you that here in a second. But in the lateral leads, which are V6, lead 1, and lead AVL, that looks at the lateral view of the heart, you're going to see what is happening to the S wave. It's looking deep and wide and a little slurred. So not only is V1 gonna have that M shape, V2 and V3 can have that M shape as well, but V6, lead one, and AVL is gonna have an S wave that's gonna look slurred, it's gonna look wide and deep. So if you see that, you definitely got a wide bundle branch block. So let me show you what this S wave, what I'm talking about. Okay, this is your view from V6, lead one, and AVL. You have your P wave, your QRS complex, and notice it's wide, it's wider than 0.12 seconds. And notice that the S wave is really wide, it's a little slurred, and that would qualify as the criteria for that. So let's look together at these two EKGs that's showing a right bundle branch block, and then we're gonna compare it to a normal EKG. Okay, so you get your EKG on a patient and the very first thing you wanna do because you're suspecting a right bundle branch block is you want your eyes to go and look at lead V1. And you wanna look and make sure it meets criteria. Remember those criteria were, it needs to be sinus. It's sinus, we have our P waves and our P waves are right here. I've tried to outline them in purple for you. They're a little bit little. And then you're gonna look at your QRS complex. And remember, it needs to be greater than 0.12 seconds and our QRS complex starts, we'll go over here because that one's a little bit bunched up, but it starts right here and it ends about right there. And that's definitely five blocks. So our QRS complex measurement is 0.20 seconds. So definitely qualifies for that. And remember, if you don't know how to measure one of these, check out my other videos on how to do that. Now let's look for that M phenomenon that we were talking about, the RSR prime. Well, just looking at this, it looks a little bit funny because look, you have this spike here and then you have a taller spike beside of it. So what you have is you have your R wave here, your S wave there, and then R prime up there. And if you notice this one, you can see it a little bit better. It's forming that R pattern. I mean that M pattern like that, like this that we we're talking about. See, it's a little bit of M. These are a little bit bunched up, so it's a little bit difficult to see, but you can see it. But let's go down to V2. Remember, for broad bundle, it's definitely going to be present up here, this M thing. And it can be present in V2 and V3, but let's look at V2. And in V2, we definitely have the same thing going on, but notice that here's your P wave, and here's your R, S, R. And notice that this R wave is a lot taller than the second one. And remember I said that that can happen that the first R wave can be tall and then the second one can be little, but it's still forming that M formation. Now let's go down to and look at V6 and leads one and AVL for that slurred S wave. Okay, here in V6, we're looking for that slurred S wave and we most definitely have that. See how deep it is? We're not only looking for slurred, but we're also looking for it being deep and wide and it's very deep and it's very wide. And where those arrows are pointing is exactly what I'm talking about. Now this is the lateral view of the heart. Now let's go look at the other lateral views, which are AVL and lead one, so you can see what I'm talking about. And then we'll compare it to a normal EKG. Okay, notice this is an EKG that is normal sinus rhythm, no right bundle branch block. And of course this is a right bundle branch block. Now look at this S wave. See right here, it's like, it's baseline. It's on the line, it's perfect. It's not going down like how this one is, deep and down, that's not normal. And all these look great, and these are downward deflected. And then AVL. AVL is doing the same thing that lead one is doing with the S wave. 
look how it's deflected down, it's going down. But the S wave and AVL right here, it's perfect, it's baseline, it's nice and level with everything else. So that is the difference. Now let me quickly show you the difference between V1, that M shape, compared to a normal EKG. Okay, the one on the bottom is your normal EKG and the view of V1, and the top one is, or abnormal one with right, right bundle branch block. Now, look at this. We'll do this one because you can see this better. But over here, you have your P wave, you have your PQR, you have your QRS, and then you have your R prime, and it makes the M pattern. But when you look at the V1 in the normal EKG, you just have Q, a P wave, a PQRS, I mean a P wave, a QRS, and then an S, a T wave. So it's downward deflected, which is normal. That's a normal view. In here, it's upward deflected, and you have two R waves. So I just wanted to show you the difference. Now let's look at another EKG with a right bundle branch block and show you that one. Okay, so someone hands you this EKG. What's the very first thing you do? You are gonna take your eyes and you're gonna look at V1, and you're gonna make sure it's sinus that you have a P wave, which these P waves are a little again, but there are P waves right there where I've outlined. And then you're going to look at your QRS complex and this, just looking at this, this is very wide. It starts right here and it ends right there. That's like almost 10 squares. So that's definitely greater than 0.12 seconds. Then you're going to look at V, the V1 with that R, S, R prime complex with that M. And as you can already tell by just looking at this, it has that appearance. Right here, you have your R wave, then you have your S wave, and then you have your R prime. And then you have the same thing here. You have your R wave, you have your S wave, and then you have R prime. So you definitely know that you are dealing with a right bundle branch. Now, if you go down here to V2, it's present as well. But notice, like I said with the other one, this is your R wave, and this is a lot taller then it's the first one and then your second one, which is the other R prime is a little bit smaller and that can happen. And it's making that appearance as well. V3 does not have that and it doesn't necessarily have to have it, but V1 does. Now, what do we do? We're gonna look at our lateral leads because that's the next criteria. And we're gonna look at V6. And what we're looking for, remember, are your S waves. So we're gonna go pay attention to the S wave. And right here is your S wave. And it's a little bit deflected, it's a little bit deep, it's a little bit wide. Our QRS complex is probably on the line. It is a little bit greater than 0.12 seconds. Looks like it's about four boxes. But let's go look at AVL and lead one because that's really gonna help us because all these leads right here, these three leads, they look at the same view, the lateral view. So let's look. AVL, definitely look at where this arrow is pointing. This is your S wave right here, and notice that is deep, wide, and it's a little bit slurred. It's a little bit going to the right. And your QRS complex is definitely wider than 0.12 seconds. Then let's go up to lead one, and the same thing is happening. We can actually see it a lot better. What we're looking at is that area right there where the arrow is pointing. It's wide, it's slurred, it's abnormal, definitely not normal. So this right here is definitely a right bundle branch block. Okay, I hope you understand right bundle branch blocks better. And thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to check out my other EKG videos on how to measure QRS complexes, how to interpret atrial fib, all those other things. And thank you so much for watching and please subscribe to this YouTube channel.